Nice, hello everybody. So, are you complete? Seems like some more people will be coming. Doesn't matter. Let's sit in a comfortable meditation posture. We will be meditating for 15 minutes. Make sure your back is erect. Whatever happens around doesn't matter. Tiri is not ready again. Everybody is ready. Tiri is not ready. Great. So as we are sitting in a comfortable meditation posture with the back erect, we can make the first determination in our minds voicelessly from now on for 15 minutes. I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on, for 15 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on, for 15 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. And with that determination, we can gently lovingly notice the flat piece of flesh at the top of the head. We allow it to be heavy. We continue to the forehead. Eyes, nose, lips, chin, cheeks, ears, back of the head we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the head to be heavy we continue to the neck shoulders arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, palms, fingers, tips of fingers, chest, abdomen, back. We allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the upper part of the body to be heavy and changing. We continue to the buttocks, thighs, 
thighs, knees, calves, heels, soles, toes, dips of toes, we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the body to be heavy, And we enjoy this happiness. Now we can allow all of the body parts to be changing. We give the freedom to the body to be the way it is. As we give the freedom to the body, we ourselves enjoy freedom from worry about the body. Let's watch this freedom. Let's watch this peace.
Now, as we have achieved peace, we can share it with other living beings. We start in our row. May all beings in this room be in peace. May all beings in this building be in peace. May all beings in this building be in peace. May all beings in this city or village be in peace. May all beings in this country be in peace. May all beings in this city or village be in peace. May all beings in this country be in peace. May all beings on this continent be in peace.
may all beings, including me, be in peace. Now, because the time for this sitting is finished, let's make the last determination in our minds wordlessly. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, I will always be calm. And with that determination, we can slowly, mindfully change the way of our sitting. Now, without movement, don't go close to the camera. Stay where you are. We will take one more minute to enjoy the peace we gained in meditation while we don't move at all. Nice. So today, let's do Burmese pronunciation. I think last time we did Sri Lankan, right? So today, let's do Burmese pronunciation. Yes, uh, Emily? Can I quickly go to the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we'll be doing Burmese pronunciation. Make sure that you listen to me carefully. Yes, Zue. Oh, could I also use the bathroom to wash my face because I have, I think I have allergies right now. It's fine, please. Yes, please, please go. Diddy, also want to go to bathroom? Uh, <laughs> okay, so. Everybody who wants to go to the bathroom, go now. It's good that you're going at the same time. It is locked in here. <laughs> All right, so you cannot do anything because too many people are gone. Isn't that amazing? I'm now in Thailand. I'm now in Thailand. I'm enjoying my stay. I'm on a little boat in a, a beautiful lotus pond. So, we will be traveling today in Thailand, and then hopefully tomorrow I'll return to Vietnam. And before I came to Thailand, I was in India. And in India, I gave a big speech about monks and their roles. And we distributed a lot of books 
that I wrote. I wrote a book and we printed it and distributed it. So I'm very happy. Very tired, but happy. <laughs> yes, did he? You're talking about the books you told me about? Probably, yes. It was successful. Okay. In India, I was able to distribute it and I gave my speech and it was very good. I'm happy that uh, people liked it. Yes, this way. What's the book called and how can you get it? Uh, the, it's not interesting for you because it's very uh, specifically related to monks and it's specifically related to the rule that monks must not touch money. So it will not be interesting for you, but for your parents it might be interesting. Because in the book I explain that lay people, that means those who are not monks or nuns, Whoever is not a monk or nun is called a lay person, all right? So lay people should not give money to monks. That's what I explain in the book. I explain that monks should not accept and lay people should not give. You see, if one of the two will follow the rule, then it's easy. You know, if a lay person gives money to a monk, but the monk doesn't accept, yay, no problem at all. If the lay person does not give money to a monk, then even if a monk accepts, no problem. Do you understand? Because nothing to accept. So one of the two sides must follow the rules. All right. If both of them follow it, then of course, both of them are happy. Okay. Yes, Teddy. What would happen if they both don't follow it? Oh, wait, that's, that's obvious. That's what's happening now. Lay people give money oh. to monks, monks accept money, and therefore they're not, uh, they're not beautiful monks, they're not noble monks, they're not nice monks who follow all the rules. So lay people then see, ah, you see, that monk doesn't follow rule. Because he doesn't follow rule, we don't want to worship him, we don't want to trust him. Now when monks do not follow rules, then if a monk who doesn't follow rules teaches you rules, Tiri, Will you be enthusiastic to follow the rules? It would be less strict, but... It's a little it weird, isn't it? Like the monk doesn't follow rules. So how come that you would then follow rules? The monk is then no more inspiration for you, right? Yeah. Now, if the monk exactly. follows all the rules, if the monk follows all of the rules, suddenly the monk is an inspiration for you. So that you then follow rules. Now monks have 91,805,036,000 rules. Now if a monk follows all of those rules, then wouldn't that be an inspiration for you to follow your five rules? Right. <laughs> You see, but if the monk breaks his rules, well, then how is that an inspiration? It's not inspiration at all. It's actually the opposite. It's just, it's not just losing it. It's not just not giving inspiration. It's also losing it. You see, that's exactly what the Buddha said. If monks break rules, well, then uh, those who already have faith in the Buddha's teachings, they will be losing it, and those who do not have faith yet, they will not get it. Whereas the monks who follow all of the rules, they increase faith in those who already have faith, and they create faith in those who did not have faith yet. That's what the Buddha said. So in the book, I explain how it's extremely important that monks follow the rules. All right, so let's get into our uh, nice recitation in Burmese pronunciation. So everybody please unmute and keep your hands together at the chest. Yamaha wadami tam wadeta. Aham bandi. Aham bandi. Aham bandi. Aham bandi. 
Piensa Tila. Piensa Tila. Dhamaya Asami. Dhamaya Asami. Anaugahan Katawa. Anaugahan Katawa. Tila Deta Me Pante. Tila Deta Me Pante. Anukampa Upadaya. Anukampa Upadaya. Dudiyampi Aham Pante. Dudiyampi Aham Pante. Ditarane Nataha. Ditarane Nataha. Piensa Tilan Dhamma Yasami. Piensa Tilan Dhamma Yasami. Anaugahan Katawa. Anaugahan Katawa. Tilan Deta Me Pante. Tilan Deta Me Pante. Anukampa Upadaya. Anukampa Upadaya. Tatiyampi Aham Pante. Tatiyampi Aham Pante. Titarane Nataha. Titarane Nataha. Piensa Tilan Dhamma Yasami. Piensa Tilan Dhamma Yasami. Anukampan Upadaya. Anugahan Katawa Tilan Deta Me Pante Tilan Deta Me Pante Anukampan Upadaya Anukampan Upadaya Namo Tata Bhagavato Arahato Tamma Tambo Tata Namo Tata Bhagavato Arahato Tamma Tambo Tata Namo Tata very well. Okay. Both hand there and get some meat, hand man there and get some meat, and Duty young people, tender and kiss, hummy, duty young beat, ham and turn and kiss, hummy, young beat, and hand turn and kiss, hummy. Dati yang pi baut hantar nang kisami, dati yang pi daman tar nang kisami, dati yang pi tang hantar nang kisami. Dati yang pi baut hantar nang kisami, dati yang pi daman tar nang kisami. Tarana gamana paripona. Amma padre. Pana ti pada we ramani teka pada tama diami. Pana ti pada we ramani teka pada tama diami. Adena dana we ramani teka pada tama diami. Kame tu mai sa sa ra we ra mani te ka padan tama diya mi. Kame tu mai su mai sa sa ra we ra mani te ka padan tama diya mi. Muta wa da we ra mani te ka padan tama diya mi. Tura me raya mi sa pamada tana we ra mani te ka padan tama diya mi. Tura me Titaranenata dhengpien satilan dhammanta dhukantura khidang katawa appama deta tampa deta. Appama deta.
may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you soon attain the eternal bliss of Nibbana. So now let's look at our stories. May see the, you know, I'm in a beautiful hotel, but they lost electricity, so it's so hot in here. <laughs> Now let's wait for the mic. Oh, wait. That's my drummer. So I'm now in okay. Thailand. Did you you miss the, the information? So I'm now in Thailand. Isn't that the place where you would like to go, Didi? I never said that I'd like to go there, but I would. What would you like to see in Thailand? Hmm. Don't what would you, what know would you like anybody in Thailand. Then but my teacher has a friend um, who's Thai. Vincent, what would you like to say? What did you say? I'm talking to Tenza. Oh. Food. Food. Oh, you would like to taste the food here. Mm -hmm. But I think it's quite spicy. I personally don't like it at all. <laughs> I like spicy things. You like spicy? What, what do you like there? I like spicy things. Uh, you like spicy things. I see. Okay. Well, that's, that's probably yes. what you have inherited from your parents because Burmese people love spicy things so much. Emily? I would like to see the things there because um, I don't remember anything when I went to Thailand when I was like about five. Mm. It was so hot that I, like I would ask for ice cream a lot of times. Uh, <laughs> that's good. You had a solution. You know, many people are just angry that it's hot. Good. You had a solution. You knew what to do. Well done. This is right. Uh, I would just fly to Thailand and then just go back because I just want to ride the plane there. And you want to go by plane, I see. Today I'm going to visit the Emerald Buddha. Have you ever heard about Emerald Buddha, anyone? No? Okay. So maybe we can make some video and I will then play for you the video where we saw Emerald Buddha in Thailand. All right. So um, now I would like to listen to your stories. So let's look at um, what you have. Did you get? Did you find the links? Did you upload uh, all of your stories in uh, in Facebook? Yes, you got it. Good. Now I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not preparing the links anymore. So. I actually have no idea what's going on in, in the Facebook, but I can tell you that this week was very, very intensive for me. All right, but at the same time, it was also very successful. So uh, although it was very hard, I think I uh, was pretty good. So uh, let's look at your stories right away. Today, Andre has dreamed six to 10. I'm listening. Uh, one day, a king told the Buddha of 16 dreams. The sixth dream was about an old jackal urinating in a golden bowl, which meant that in the future, kings will pick the youngest as their heir to the throne. The seventh dream was about a man braiding a robe, but a beast was eating it as fast as he could braid it, which meant that in the future, one would waste all of the husband's money. The eighth dream was about many people only filling the picture that was full and not the empty ones, which meant that in the future, people would only serve the king and not themselves. The ninth dream was about a pond where the middle was dirty and the edges were clean, which meant that people would abandon their kingdom and, kingdom and go to the remote sections. 
The tenth dream was about a rice pot that was sodden in one part, hot and hard and raw on the other, and another was cooked perfectly, which meant that in the future one kingdom will be dry, one will be showered with rain, and one will be normal. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Then uh, next five dreams will be explained by Emily. Once there was a king who wanted to know what his dreams meant, but Agota said that those dreams would happen in the future, so it was a bad future. Then Agota said a long time ago someone had those same dreams and said there's nothing to be afraid of. The end. Aha, uh -huh, but you need to explain to us dreams 11 to 15 to 16. You need to explain to okay. us dreams. Do you have them? Um, no. You don't. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Emily, uh, for the next time, you need to prepare dreams 11 to 16, okay? Okay. No problem at all. That's fine. So now let's continue. This is 33, and now we have 34A by May. Do you have May here today? I don't see May here today, so that's not successful. We'll give that to Andre. And then, um, 34B, Zui. Saka wanted his son to be charitable and worthy of rebirth in Tabatisma, so he disguised himself as his son and gave away riches. But then, when the real Elisa came, he saw his son being given away. Elisa got beaten, so he went to the king to tell the difference between the real Elisa and the fake one. But then, when they realized they had the same body features, all of them laughed at the real Elisa. But then, Saka resumed his divine form and told Elisa to never hold him to say, I love it's not very clear to me. Can you tell me in your own words uh, what was the story about? What, how do you remember the story? So there was some problem with the uh, Saka wanted his son to be born in heaven, right? Yes. And so what was the problem? What was the difficulty there? Um. I think, I think that, that, um, that, that his, his son, son didn't want, just hoarded the riches to himself. I see. And so, how did the uh, how did the father, the uh, the king of gods, Saka, resolve that? He disguised himself as, as his, his son, son, and then he gave away. away his son reaches the people. <laughs> and then? And then, but, but they, they, and then, then when, when his son, son when his when son, son came, came back, back uh, uh, they, they didn't, didn't believe, believe the, the real, real, the real, real one, one, so, uh, I can't remember. Ah, uh, you cannot remember. Okay, so you will have to read better. So we will anyway have to look at 34 next time again because, you know what, because we didn't get 34A. 34A was from May and May is not in here today. And we will hear 34A from, from Andre uh, the next, not tomorrow, next week. All right, so May has whatever... Uh, uh, May is not here, so that's the way it is. And then uh, let's continue with Tenza. So Tenza has 35. Once there was a monk who bragged a lot, a lot about, about his splendid, splendid life, life, but all of that was lies, so he got caught and stopped bragging. Would I explain that in the past he almost got killed from lies and told the story of the past? The Buddha was once born as a dwarf, and he, and he was very skilled at archery. 
but people guarded him for his height, so the dwarf hired a man and hid in his shop. When the man was needed, the dwarf told him, told him a plan. Soon he was intoxicated and took all the credit and shoot the dwarf away. When a neighboring kingdom came to invade the city, the man was unprepared to leave the army. The, the army. But when he went on the battlefield, he had... Um, <laughs> But when he went on the battle, I need to read. Did you understand the story, actually? So, I had, uh, I said the same, same thing, thing twice. twice. <laughs> uh huh. Can you tell us more in your own words? How do you understand the story? Um, the Buddha was born as a door, but as a door. Like a door, those short, those like really, really short people. A oh, dwarf. a dwarf. I see, dwarf, yes. So he was born as a dwarf, but when he would try to go get a job by one of those kings, he would get rejected for his height. So he hired a very tall man who was a weaver to, um, so he could like pretend that he was the archer. So when they went to the king, they finally got hired. And then it was like, a whole, like a king, the, whenever he was needed, the dwarf would tell him what to do. And he would do as he was told. But he got, um, he got very, he got a habit out of it and then just took all the credit and shooed the dwarf away. And then um, a king came to invade the city. So the man was in charge with that, but he did not know what to do. So the, so the dwarf took charge of it and won the battle. Yeah. I see. Okay, so there's a little happy end in that. Nice. Thank you very much. So that was uh, 35, right? So let's move on to uh, 36 from Tiri. Once a man was teased for his name. His friend left the house and robbers came. Then they made lots of noise and the robbers ran. Then his friend was happy. After that, people did not tease him as much. The story was a man named Trouble. Uh, I don't see Valentina here today. Anyone has any idea oh. about Valentina? I do not know where Valentina went. So I will ask I will ask uh, Tiri to tell us the story one more time, but, uh, but it will be, Tiri, I don't see your yes. story in, uh, in Facebook. Oh. I think it's because my dad meant to send it to my mom so my mom could put it in Facebook. But I think it didn't go I think on, I, on the way. So um, some uh, next time you can check with your parents, you know, like today, like now it's like evening for you. So today, like in the morning, you could check with your parents. Did you actually upload my homework to Facebook? You know, okay. In the morning oh. of your Saturday, you can check with your parents whether they have uploaded it so that in the evening when you come for the class, you know that it's done. Because now I see. You meant to do it on Friday, but then. And Tenza also. I do not see Tenza's. Uh, Tenza. Ah, yes, I see. Tenza is fine. Tenza is fine. May actually okay. not in here, but she's actually fine. And. Um, 
other people seems that everybody has it everybody has it uh just uh did he, uh, you you need to check uh 39 <laughs> and 40 so. is not done uh but 39 and 40 no nobody was doing that that's good okay that's good so just thumbs up please check and make sure that your uh, story is uploaded previously i was uh, asking some people to upload uh something that you did not upload in the long long ago 28 28 who was responsible for 28 zue zue did you upload your 28 uh, your story 28 can you do it no do you think you can yeah. do it today Make yeah you do it today because it's getting too too far in the past and then it's difficult to to do that so make sure you upload 28 what else do we have here I'm going to mute now. Excuse me, Didi? I'm going to mute now. Okay, looks good. Uh, I don't see a problem in the past. So just 28 for Zwe and uh, uh, now today homework for, for Didi. Uh, so you two, please make sure you upload ideally today itself. All right. Okay, I'll ask my dad as if he, 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 I mean, he can send it to my mom, um, and if she can upload it, um, because I have no idea to upload it, and my dad has no idea how to upload it, but my mom knows how. So we Probably need to actually are, I think send it dad, over, and send it over, and send it over. Anyway. I think actually your dad knows how to upload it. He just doesn't have access. So oh. your dad can uh, can ask me for access by if your dad can ask me for access um, by email if he can tell me his uh, Facebook name then I can give him access. I need. To oh, I don't think he uses. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Well, he can make it. You know, it's very easy to make a Facebook account. So uh, he can tell me his Facebook name in uh, email and then i will give him access so that he can upload himself i think he himself will be happier because it's less uh, less troublesome uh if he can do it directly mm -hmm. oh yeah because yeah, my, my mom, mom can forget, forget any time or she, she might you can also she forget any time this, this is not important at the... this is not important at all <laughs> What's important is that your dad has direct access so that you do not ask another person to do something else uh, with another person and another person to do something else. Not necessary. Okay. You couldn't send it to your mom. You couldn't give it to your mom directly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see. Your mom is uh, well, I, taking care I, of another family. But I can give, wait, no, not directly. I can give it to my mom directly because she's at the hospital with my uncle. You would have to wait until you go to the hospital, right? I'm not going to the hospital. I have to wait for her to come back. And sometimes she stays there um, for a few nights. So I don't know exactly when she's coming back. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think it will be very good if your dad has direct access. And I'm sure that yes. your dad knows very well how to do it. It's just that I need to give him the permission. So. Ask him to send me email with his Facebook name. If he doesn't have okay. Facebook, tell him that I would uh, recommend to make a new uh, to make a Facebook account, and okay. uh, then uh, we will resolve that fast. Okay. Right. I'm sure that's going to be hard for him, but I know he'll try. I know he's willing to try though. So uh, now uh, story thirty-seven. Uh, two people have story 37, but only one of them is here, and that is Yamona. So, Yamona, please rescue that problem and tell us story 37. The Boda told this story about the superstitious Brahmin when a stubborn Brahmin got upset because he thought a piece of cloth was cursed. Long ago, the Boda to be Bodhisattva was born an Aztec and a rich Brahmin who was famous for reading omens and cloths lived close by. The Brahmin was very superstitious in that life as well. 
One day, the Brahmin asked his son to throw away the clothes because he believed whoever owned that clothes will have bad luck. When the ascetic saw that, he took the clothes for himself and told the Brahmin firmly that there is no such thing. The Brahmin finally gave up on his superstition. I see. Very well. Superstition. Do you know what is superstition, Yamuna? No idea. Anyone can tell what is superstition? Did he? Anyone else? Andre, you have no idea what superstition? You do? Andre, Tiri, anyone else? Tenza. I know. Tenza, do you know you don't know what superstition? Emily? Zue? No idea? Okay. Superstition is a very important uh, concept. I'm losing battery, so I have a problem here. Um, so superstition. Superstition. That believe something that is not true. And usually is related to something that's happening outside. For example, superstition. If you say, tomorrow I will be successful, you must knock. Because if you do not knock, you will not be successful. Does this make sense? Doesn't make sense. But some people believe that. If you say, oh, I must, I will pass my exam. So that they pass it. If they did not knock, cannot pass. No, no. That's called superstition. All right. When you see a spider, you will be rich. That's called superstition. When a black cat goes across your way, you know, you go, you go somewhere, and then the, then a black cat passes your way, and then you continue, ah, uh, superstition. And you think you will be unlucky. <gasps> I saw a black cat cross my way. I will probably lose my money or I will lose my job. <laughs> okay. Does it make sense? Doesn't make sense. But some people believe it. You see? Yes, Teddy? I know another superstition. Mm -hmm. Tell us. With your eyes twitching, um, that so so someone, someone has, has to... Uh, Hold their, Hold their breath, breath and slap their hands seven times, or maybe that is six. I'm not sure. But it's actually because of the nerve. It's actually because of the nerve in your eye. That's right. Uh, some people, some people believe that if you hiccup, that it means that somebody else is thinking about you. If you hiccup, you know. <laughs> You know, that's if you hiccup, some people say, oh, somebody is thinking about you. Somebody is thinking about you. So there are superstitions like that. In Buddhism, we don't accept. Yes, Tenza? Uh, I wasn't raising my hand. Okay. I think previously you did, though. Anyway, Yamona. I know a superstition. My friend at school believed that if you say something, I don't know what it was, I don't remember, 10 times you get bad luck. I see. Yes, there is about the mirror. Have you ever heard of that? If you break a mirror for seven years, you will be unlucky. But if you take your shirt inside out, you will be lucky that day. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, okay, Emily. Is crossing your fingers a superstition? You mean like do, doing this to, to be this to, to be lucky? Yeah. Yes, that's a superstition. Totally not related, useless. Yes, Tenza? 
think I have to so find a four leaf clover. And, um, like, I think, I think there's, there's that, that one, one where if you, like, step on a crack or something. Then? I forgot. Now you don't know what will happen. Okay, that's good. Emily? I remember what would happen if you step on a crack. Yes. Step on a crack and break your mom's back. Uh, you, sorry, what is this? Can you repeat it? You will break your mom's back when you um, step on a crack. How will you break your mom's back? Why, why would you do that? I don't know. You don't know, okay. Total nonsense. Yes, then, Zah? Step on a line, line and break, and break your father's your spine. spine. <laughs> Did he? Last two superstitions that I heard do not, not make, make any sense, sense at all. That's why it's called. I don't know. It Zui? doesn't even. Zui? Uh, if you walk under, under a ladder, ladder, you get, you get bad, bad luck. luck. And, and also, also opening, opening an umbrella, umbrella in the inside. Side. And if somebody sweeps under your legs, ladies, you will never get married. <laughs> so, so, be careful. <laughs> All right, so superstition, absolutely unnecessary thing. So we have finished reading our stories for today. I will assign to you new stories. Uh, we will need to to do the stories which we didn't do uh, today, and we had to. So that was 34A. I would like to ask Zue to read his 34B better, so he remembers better and understands better. And then uh, Tenza can read story 38. Let me see how that looks like. You're losing my battery. I don't know what to do. No electricity in here. Is there a charger that you could charge while doing this? Or could you bring the device to a charger and you just do it from there? But I think all of the hotel is out of battery, you know, uh, out, of, out of electricity. So actually, oh, right. I don't need to charge anything at all. Do you have a charger from home? I have some that batteries, you know. But um, uh, but these batteries are now discharged. So I'm now going uh, through the last uh, last little bit of the remaining battery that I have in the laptop. Uh oh. We can definitely finish this class within the next thirty three minutes. But after this class, I have another class, and that I will not be able to do, at least not completely. All right. I forgot there's a class. Yeah, I have another class right after this one. Fine, so I will just assign to uh, s some of you the, the reading. So 38, story 38 is very, very short. It's about two pages. I'll show you how that looks like. So that is for Tensa, right, isn't it? So Tensa will have 38, then we have 39. 39 is also very, very short. And that will be for Tiri. Then we have Valentina didn't come today, so she will be doing the same thing. And then Yamona. Yamona can get... Oh, this is a little longer. It's story 40. 40. It's not very long, though. Yamuna, do you think you can make it? It's about seven pages, seven and a half. Yeah, well, seven pages altogether. Yamuna, do you think you can read that? Super, very well. So I will. Uh, I hope to share with you uh, the homework also in Facebook as soon as I get some time, probably today or tomorrow. And uh, I can probably share it with you here in Zoom also. Let me see. That's right. So now everybody has it in Zoom. So you can check your Zoom. Yes, Tiri? I actually read the first few sentences of mine, so it's a coincidence that 
I got that one. Of 30. So I only read the first three sentences. I see. Okay, well, that you you need to read it all and you need to write down, you know, your summary. Only the yeah. done. Andrea? You're not right. Well, I can check. Um, I cannot hear you. How much, how much is uh, story 34A? 34A. I think about four pages. It's, uh, you know, it's the first part of, uh, it's the Buddha's time part. 34A is the part of the story that's related to the Buddha's time. All right, so let me let me show you how that looks like. 34. 34 is actually, you can actually read it all. It's about, well, it's about 10 pages. So you can read the first five pages until, you can read the first five pages. Then, uh, it actually, uh, you can read until long, long ago. I will show you how that looks like. So you can note down that you read until long, long ago. All right. So can you see that? Long, long ago. Yes. So you read until here. Then the Buddha has told his story of the past. Because Zue is taking care of this previous life, you know, of the of the past life story. And uh, you, uh, Andre, will be taking of the present life story. So it's a little shorter, Zue has it longer. Okay. So, Andre, you have these four pages. And Zue has about six pages, you know, until here. That's, that's what Zue has. About six pages. Well, five, five pages, a little bit over five pages. And this one as well. Any questions? Anyone has anything to say? Nothing to say. It was a pleasure to see you. May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you be successful in everything you do. Bye. 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 Bye.